to investigate any potential meaning to the area of a velocity versus time graph. And I'm thinking about this because I noticed something, and I just want to share the thing that I noticed with you. Uh, if I take a box, say, uh, on this graph, I've got a box that is one second wide. The delta t for that box is one second, uh, delta t being uh, the later time minus the previous time, so two seconds minus one second. That box has a width of one second. And that box has a height because the blue line representing velocity is at one meter for every second. Uh, it goes, uh, that box goes between zero and one meter for every second. So the height of that box is one meter for each second. So if I wanted to find how much area that box has, then I just need to multiply the two together. And if I multiply these together, um, and I'm multiplying because for a box, area is the length times the height of the box. So I'm multiplying one meter for every one second times one second. That was an S, believe it or not. Now, if I multiply those together, I notice something strange. I get, if I multiply, and multiplying, just to make sure that we see this clearly, um, something, uh, I could rewrite this one second as divided by one, just so we can see clearly that that one second that I'm multiplying belongs in a numerator. Now, if I do this multiplication, then I want us to notice that I've got one second in a denominator and one second in a numerator, and so those seconds divide out and I'm left with just a meter. The area of that yellow shaded in rectangle is one meter. Strange. Um, thinking about like, what might that mean then? One meter, um, what kinds of measurements have a unit of a meter? So could that area mean say, a distance travel? Could it mean a position? Could it mean a displacement? Let's explore that. Distance, position, displacement, these are all things that we measure in meters, so maybe it could mean one of those things. Uh, let's explore a little bit by looking at a graph and thinking about what we might find. So let's say this graph right here represents a child walking forwards. And I know uh, I can say walking forwards because this is a velocity, not a speed. Um, so walking forwards because the velocity is positive. A uh, child is walking forwards at three meters for every second. So if I were to look at the area of this graph, say from uh, zero seconds to one second, the area of that shaded in rectangle, it's three meters for every one second tall and it's one second wide, and I calculate three meters. If I were to look at an area, say from one second to three seconds, shaded here in green, then that area, that box is three meters for every one second tall, and it is two seconds wide. And when I do that multiplication, three meters times two seconds divided by one second, then I'm left with six is my number, three times two divided by one, and meters is my unit, meters times seconds divided by seconds. So I can see here 
that the graph is showing me um, in these two seconds, the child has an area of six meters. Now, could that represent the distance that they traveled? Um, well, I don't think we need to have taken a physics class to think if I go three meters each second and I travel for two seconds, I'm going to go six meters. So maybe uh, distance might be accurate. Um, and that would work for the zero seconds to one seconds as well. Each second, the child travels three meters. So distance uh, looks like it's a maybe still. Um, position, do I know that at a time of one second, the child was at a position of three meters? Um, do I know that at a time of three seconds, the child was at a position of six meters? Actually, if I think about that, if I make a motion map for the moving child, if the child started here at zero seconds and always traveled forwards by three meters each second, So if at zero seconds, one second, two seconds, three seconds, and the graph goes on. So if the child was here at a position of three meters, then she would have traveled, or he, or they, or whoever, would have traveled another three, and then would have traveled another three. So it can't be position, because if the child traveled three meters each second, then the position of three meters and the position of six meters, um, it looks to me like this is saying how much further the kid goes. Uh, so maybe from one second to three seconds, we're going three and three, we're going six meters more. So maybe, uh, this represents the distance traveled in that time interval. Maybe it represents the displacement because those are closely linked ideas. But I'm thinking that this can't be position because if the child is moving three meters each second, if position one second is three meters, then the position at three seconds would have to be nine meters. And that doesn't match up with our area. So it's not position. Now, is it Distance then, or is it displacement? Well, let's try another one, where now I've got a velocity that sometimes our object is moving forwards, and sometimes our object is moving backwards. And I should have marked that that's a negative three velocity, negative three meters each second. Uh, so we start off for the first two seconds traveling at five meters for each second. And then from two seconds and onward, we travel with a velocity of negative three meters for each second. By the way, you might think uh, that this segment right here is a little bit unrealistic, and I agree with you. Uh, when we look at a position versus time graph that has like a sharp position versus time, that has like a sharp change like this, um, then we're dealing with something that's a little bit unrealistic because we're looking at you have one slope and we know that the slope is velocity. So we go from having one slope to having a different slope. But if you've ever moved, I'm guessing you probably have moved at some point in your life, then you know you can't just like instantly have a different velocity. There's got to be some kind of process of change there. And so like this segment of a graph where you just like instantly have a different velocity or this segment of that graph where you just instantly have a different velocity, those aren't realistic. And so we should recognize that to have a new velocity, a different velocity, then your velocity has to change. And we don't know anything about that yet. We don't yet know anything about how does velocity change. So what we're really thinking about here with a situation like this is we need to realize that we don't have the whole story yet because we don't know how to deal with changing velocity. So this is gonna be a little bit unrealistic since we only so far know a constant velocity model, then we don't yet have the tools for developing how does that velocity change. So let's just imagine for right now that we could change velocity 
really rapidly. Um, like we can change that velocity so quickly that we're not gonna notice it on the graph. And we'll just store that in mind as an imperfection, a flaw of the constant velocity model, or maybe I shouldn't say a flaw, but it's incomplete. This isn't the whole story of physics, believe it or not. So looking at this graph, if I look at an area in the first two seconds, then I've got an area of five meters for each second times two seconds gives me 10 meters. And if I look at an area, let's say from two seconds to five seconds, then the width of that triangle, that rectangle, I know my shapes, the width of that rectangle is five seconds minus two seconds. The delta T here is three seconds wide. And so my area is negative three meters for each second times three seconds gives me negative nine meters. Now, what's the story behind that negative sign? Um, by the way, if you have a math teacher who wants to yell at me that you can't have a negative area, well, we can be imaginative enough to recognize that the negative sign for velocity had some meaning, so maybe we don't want to just throw away that meaning. Um, the negative sign can be important. We know, okay, if our person moved at three meters each second, but that negative sign is telling us they moved backwards, then that negative sign still shows up and is telling us that our person from two seconds to five seconds was moving backwards. And so what we're looking at with this graph now is saying not just how far, but we can see even with an area that is above the axis, we get positive numbers. With an area that's below the axis, we get negative numbers. And so for making a distinction between distance and displacement, we can tell uh, one of these doesn't tell us anything at all about direction, but the other one does. We know that distance doesn't tell us about direction, but displacement does tell us about direction. When we subtract initial position minus final, sorry, I had that backwards. We subtract final position minus initial position. Now we call that delta x for the change in x, the change in position. And the change in position for the first two seconds was the area of the red section. And the change in position for the last three seconds, from two seconds to five seconds, was the area of the green shaded section. And if we look at, and so this is telling us that for the first two seconds we went forwards, that's a positive area on top. So this is a positive five meters for each second, so that's a positive 10 meters. And then in the next three seconds, we went backwards by nine meters then these are telling us displacements for those different time intervals. And we could even see then that for the whole first five seconds, we've got an area of positive 10 meters plus negative nine meters. And so that means that we had, for the first five seconds, we went forwards by 10 meters, backwards by nine meters. So we had a displacement for the whole five seconds of positive one meter for the whole time interval of five seconds. And so this is telling us our displacement, not the distance that we traveled. The distance that we traveled on this graph would be the first segment I went 10 meters, the next segment I went nine meters, because distance doesn't tell us about forwards or backwards. Distance just tells us how much farther. And so we only ever add numbers together. We don't have positives and negatives. So the distance traveled would be 19 meters, but the displacement would be positive one meter. So it looks here like the velocity versus time graph, the area of that graph is showing us, the area in between the graph and the time axis is showing us the displacement that we had for that segment of time, for that time interval. 
So I hope that that's helpful. Now, will this continue to be a useful and important thing beyond when we just have rectangular shapes? Um, I guess we'll have to find out. But for now, at least, it appears that this works for the area between the velocity graph and the time axis. The area is telling us displacement. And that's pretty cool.